JJ Austin, please tell us what is the old economy saying about e-commerce of tomorrow? Is the clicker just up there? Thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. So um, for those um, who know me very well, you would expect me to do a long and intricate speech, but I'm not allowed to do this. Marco said no. For those who uh, do not know me very well, I'm uh, JJ Van Oosten. Um, I work for the Reve Group, and we have exactly the opposite problem that, or opportunities that you have in the room. We have already a lot of turnover. That is 50 billion euros. We already have a lot of customers. That is 70 million customers go to our shops across 15 countries every week. And we have access minimum to 1.5 billion euros a year. So when you look at this, we don't have a problem. Everything is okay. However, my job in there is the following. I have to make sure that we remain relevant for the next 20 to 30 years. And the internet for us and for me specifically is like, as you say in German, a tectonische Verschiebung. Hmm? And when you look at this, obviously, on music, we all, everybody knows what's happened there. We had a, a business called Promark selling electronics and TVs. The business is dead. It costs us 300 million euros, plus lots of jobs. And Amazon got that. I think Oli explained that very well, what he did. But Gors in Germany, shoes, very well known, is quite small now. Zalando has it. One could argue as well, one could argue as well that Karstadt is a victim uh, to a certain extent of Zalando, Amazon, and Brands for Friends. And in the UK, and I had the pleasure in the, my past jobs to really transform uh, Tesco from a monochannel retailer to an omnichannel retailer in food and in non-food. In the UK, which is still today the world's largest grocery online retailer uh, um, market in the world. There's 10% of, of, of Tesco turnover is online, 10%. In Germany, the highest turnover of a physical retailer is 0.2%. It's ridiculously low. So that is a massive difference. In the UK, Morrison, a well-known brand, had made some strategic investments with Fresh Direct. They did an acquisition, well-known acquisition with Kiddy Care, with some very good investment uh, advisory people. Completely wrong. They missed the boat completely, and they had no choice, no choice, but to go in bed with their enemy, that is Okedo, and completely outsource the solution to Okedo. My job with my team is to make sure that Reve, which is on the left for the moment, stays on the right for the next 20 or 30 years. And this will take time. This is not a two or three years journey. It will take us minimum seven years to get there. Minimum seven years before the customers will see everywhere in Germany or in Austria a different experience. This is the most challenging equation, I think, on the internet for the moment. Why is that? We have three different temperature zones in our products. We have to deliver ambient products, like muesli. We have to deliver fruits and vegetables and meat at three degrees. And we have to deliver frozen products. That is super complicated. On top of that, the categories that we have are extremely localized. Those of you who come from Berlin, you know that the Frikadelle from Berlin is completely different than the Frikadelle from Cologne. And localized products are extremely important. The basket is quite complex. Normally, you expect something like two or three or four items in a basket. If you sell shoes or clothes, we have more than 50. In the UK, which is more advanced, we had 68 to 72 items per basket. And we have to deliver all of this on time, within an hour, in a slot delivery, and with margins in Germany, which are only 1.1%. That is quite complicated. But 
The technology is already there because the proven models are there, especially in the UK. Customers, there is a demand from customers. Every time I open on a PLZ or a catchment area in Germany, we get full within a few weeks. And efficiencies are well known, especially when you look at the model of Okedo. Some players have already gone through. Tesco, Okedo, Le Shop in Swiss and Walmart. But, but, in general, we are quite an old-fashioned industry. The first supermarkets was created Wiggly Piggly in 1916. That's almost 100 years ago. We are very top-down driven. Not in Reve, we are more family because we are cooperative. But in general, in Tesco, Walmart, the center decides everything and is ex executed locally by people who take instructions. So we are also quite slow at making decisions. And the new entrants are there. Google uh, invested half a million, half a billion euros, uh, uh, dollars. Amazon Fresh, we expect them to come in the UK and in Germany within the next six to, to nine months. Instacart, they're currently doing a big round in Europe to look at the investments that they have to do. Oli uh, already made his investment in his bet with uh, uh, Shop Wings. And for us, you know, we could quite easily be completely disintermediated from our customers. Because these guys use our shops to do picking. They take money from it. They will get the contacts from our customers. They will have contacts with the suppliers. And at the end of the day, they could make our shops completely irrelevant. And our shop managers could become, could become just showroom managers of museums. So we have to go much faster. For me, when I look at the superior economic model, look at the return on capital employed of Okedo and the projections from the Redburn reports, that is a, an investment on a, a company, they will have a return on capital of minimum 24%. When you look at the return on, on capital employed from a Tesco of this world, which is still better than others in the UK, they are barely scratching 10%. When you look at the customer satisfaction of Okedo, they are 90%. When you look at Sainsbury, Waitrose, and all the others, they are 65%. That is a 35% gap. Now, you take those benefits and you project them to Amazon Fresh, I can tell you that the business and the sector that is already quite fragile in Germany and Austria will suffer enormously from this when Amazon Fresh comes. They are very, very strong indeed. So, what I'm doing is that I have to adapt with my team the company culture. Normal, normally, I have to have an office which is as big as an apartment. I have to have a secretary, a back area, a reference, etc. We don't do any of this. We're actually working in one big office, very startup-like. I've recruited well over 125 people, highly, highly skilled in digital marketing and the rest of it, but also they are there for the long term and they can work as a team. We take decisions in a few minutes. Nobody has to go and ask for an appointment to get to an appointment to get to an appointment. That's pretty important. My teams are absolutely at the center of every single decision. They are self-organized, but within a very, very clear direction. So we are not going to put a rocket or a, a space shuttle on a comet. We are there to make money with food and in tourism as well. And we put our customers at the center of everything. So every three weeks for the moment, we deliver new, new functionalities. And we will be doing that every day in about six to nine months from now. Decisions need to be much faster, and I'm building new capabilities, and bringing people who are digital natives in a world where you have people who print one billion prospector or leaflets and send that to 70 million uh, houses every week, you know, it's a big, big change. And I have to make sure that the guys are coming and the girls, that they stay with us. We have to make sure that the guys who do all the printing stuff and the TVs or who are used to just buy things and then shop with them on shelves and don't think left or right. 
It's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's not far from the truth. We have to make sure, and I have to make sure, these guys work together. That is not simple. That is not simple. But I have to make sure that happens. If we don't do this, we will then miss the boat. We have missed the boat in um, the touristic sector as well, because we don't have, we have 5 billion euros turnover, but only 450 million uh, euros turnover online. But we are determined like hell, like hell in food, not to miss the boat, and in the touristic sector, we're investing significantly by either buying companies or attracting the right talent to transform that business. As a result of that, we made some investments and we bought some companies like Commerce Tool. That's a, a, a well-known in Germany for us. It's a very good uh, technology business with a collection of APIs which are very scalable. It will enable us to go fast in the omnichannel sector. As we are transforming our touristic business and our foods business, we already know that we will lose some, the war on some categories like pet food. So we, meet, we, met, we made a strategic uh, investment with Zoo Royal. We took 80% of uh, the capital there, and we're working together with Capnomic. We doubled the turnover of this business. I'm injecting talent in there, and we're scaling that as much as we can this year. And with Rocket Internet, we also made some investment in there, which help us to stay in touch with what's going on every time that an investment or a good idea happens in the world. So we are quite close with Tuoli as well. So that's what I'm doing. That's what we are doing. We are very interested to hear from you on any of you who have got ideas or needs of investments. We are not that complicated to work with. We make decisions within minutes or maximum a week. And the partners who have worked with us have already benefited quite significantly from our 70 million customers who go through our, sh our stores. Thank you. Top, super, thank you so much.